I'd love to have a conversation about those things. But Sam, we did not have an interaction. We didn't have an argument. Um, you shouted me down. You took unfair shots, but you didn't. We didn't have any meaningful exchange. Affect someone else's belief. Like I came from a, a very Christian uh, upbringing. I have a lot of people in my family that are very religious. And but here's the thing: I'm also surrounded with these people that are Christian that are also very accepting and loving. Okay, which is supposed to be the Christian attitude, yeah, and right? And that's what I want. Uh, just, just a second. Accepting and loving of what? Sin? What? Why do you call someone Christian who is accepting and loving of something that Jesus died on a cross for? Sam, could could Dr. Drew, could could you answer that? How is it how is it that you seem to insist, and you said this in the program, Sam, that I am to be loving when you won't discuss what loving means from a biblical perspective? Do you know what loving means? I can guarantee you something, both Sam and Dr. Drew, loving from a biblical perspective is not what your worldview says is loving. God's love resulted in the cross. That bloody instrument of horrific death and self-sacrifice. That's what God's love resulted in. Because you see, what you seem to be missing is that God's love coexists with his holiness and his righteousness. You can't separate that out. And so the same loving God that brought about the cross likewise brought judgment against sin over and over again in the same Bible that tells us about the love of God in Christ in the cross. And so there were individuals, entire cities, Indeed, entire nations that God brought his judgment against. Same God. And many Christians make the mistake of not having a balanced biblical view of the love of God either because they look at the cross and they say, oh, look at the love of God. But what they don't see is that the background to that is the wrath of God against sin. And if you don't see the wrath of God in the cross, then you're not really seeing the love of God either. You're seeing just a, a little portion of what's actually there. So when you say loving and accepting, loving and accepting of what? I, if, if I love what nailed Jesus to the cross, how can you say I love Jesus? Should I not, in fact, hate what nailed Jesus to the cross? What, what he had to take in his own body upon the tree to bring about my peace with God? Should I not hate that? So you need to be careful because you may be asking Christians to love that which God hates. Does, God, does your God hate anything? My God hates evil. He hates injustice. So, does your God hate evil and injustice? Has, has your God even spoken with enough clarity for you to know what evil and injustice is? Or is that just up to you and I to decide, just for ourselves, we have our own little truth, and that, that's what I'd like to know. So, when you call for Christians to be loving, I just have to ask you, have you thought through what that means, to be loving from a Christian perspective? Are you actually calling Christians to love that which God himself hates. Question that I would love to ask, and you'd be welcome to come on the program, and we could have a discussion of it. It would be a fair discussion. It would be a biblically-based discussion. But he, he, this fellow, James, was going into this notion that